Welcome to the most boring fight. Until the boss finally decides to attempt to kill you seven minutes in. It really is a generally easy fight. It moves as fast as a tree, but also hits as hard as one. So the main issue is going to be dealing with mitigation and healing. Beyond that, you should have little issue with this fight. Well, that and it's the first fight with an actual DPS check. Pick light party stacks and roll spread spots. If using a marker, everyone should be choosing an intercardinal. There are almost no mechanics that cross between rolls that are not light parties or tank busters. I mean it, almost everything is roll based in this fight. Also, remember normal mode. A lot of that transfers over, including the fact that both tanks take auto attacks. We start with Spike of Life. This does heavy raid wide damage and puts a heavy bleed dot on all players. Even if you manage to survive the main hit, you're gonna want to be able to survive the ticks after. Be ready to handle a lot of these in the fight. Also what you will handle a lot of is Tank Busters. Of which, she does two types. Condensed Arrow 2 is a tank stack. It will always target the main tank, do a very large AoE around them, and leave an arrow dot on the tanks. However, it can be Dispersed Arrow 2 instead. This is tank spreads with large AoEs, arrow bleeds, and so on. Heavily mitigate these every time they come up. If you aren't trying to use specific strats, you can easily tank invuln some of the condensed arrows. It does not snapshot on the tank. It picks whoever is the lead at the cast completion, so tank swapping mid-cast is valid. Blades of Addis is next, doing the same Exaflay markers as in normal, but this time is comboed into Immortal's Auble. This changes the arena into the three-platform form with a proximity attack. Which platform you go to, though, is dictated by the blades. There are blades going right down south from the north, leaving the northwest or northeast platforms. Which one is random, based on the pattern of blades. There will always be a set of blades going across the west to east, but starting from either side. The third set of blades will start from the opposite side and slightly south, heading northwest or northeast. That will cross through the platform, leaving only one safe. Just look for the ones running across the east-west cardinal and go to the opposite side. This will avoid the third set automatically. Make sure you're on the edge to the side of the north-south blades, and you don't even have to move when you land from the obel. When the pathways appear, move over to the north one and wait for the forbidden fruit one. There will be three eggs on the north platforms. Two on one platform, one on the other. Go to the single egg one to avoid being killed by a cow dog. She will add in Hemetheos' Holy Three, which are light party stacks on the healers. Have one group north, one south on this platform. This will dodge the birds dashing across and the bow of Addis hitting the southern platform. Make sure the south group adjusts slightly away from the middle to be a bit further away from the bow. Have everyone run south except for the tanks, who are going to take another arrow too. They can join in after for another spike of life. We run south for Invalid Bonds. This will place two sets of wind debuffs on players and holy onto random players. Wind AoEs are spread and holies are stack. Each debuff will be marked with a 1 or a 2, indicating the order they go off. On this platform, we will have four players with wind 1 spread out, and the wind 2 players will stack up. Let me remind, this is all roll based. So the first debuff set will be all DPS spread, or all DPS stack, with non DPS getting the opposite. This is why we want roll based corner spreads, along with other reasons later on. As the first set of debuffs go off, Bow of Addis will too. This will be the close one, hitting both northern platforms. Then she will prep the giant punch randomly. When the arrow indicator appears, run to the other platform to dodge the punch. While there, swap rolls. If DPS was spread first, all DPS will stack mid while the non-DPS all spread out. Make sure you are direct mid and direct edges as the AoEs aren't tiny. Put into simpler terms, this is a stack into spread or spread into stack based on your roll. Heal up and then spread into light parties. Group 1 on the northwest platform and group 2 northeast. You can cross over the northern bridge, but not for long. Roots of Addis will remove it. 
after casting, the platform will flash for five seconds before shattering. So you have a lot of time to cross, but the sooner the better. Stand at the edge for some cross-party healing soon. There will be an Arrow 2 Buster coming up. The tanks can just move to the south platform to share if needed, then return to their light parties. Forbidden Fruit 2 will place birds on the platforms. She will also use Multicast. The first part is Hemetheos' Arrow 4 on the south platform. You can just arm's length it, but you're intended to all go south and be knocked back to your platform. Spread out because of Hemetheos' Holy. Technically, there is room for more, but there are only four safe spots that also dodge the birds. Easiest way to find them? Use the plus shape in the middle of the platform and walk straight to the edge. I used the owl face as I called it in my head, but that's along the plus shape too. These hurt, which is why I recommended standing at the edges. You will want some decent mitigation and perhaps even some shields. Things like spread aloe can even reach across. Move back to the same spots after for any post-mechanic healing if needed. Roots of Addis will come out again and take out both remaining pathways. This will lead into Forbidden Fruit 3, which is easy. There will be cow dogs on every platform, and Hemetheos' Holy 3 on both healers. A new Savage exclusive pathway will appear, connecting all three in the middle. The moment the path begins to appear, step off the platform. This dodges the cow dogs and takes the stack safely. Group up south for a bow of Addis by itself. It is always the double pound into punch. This will lead into another Arrow 2 buster. Everyone can group up mid, and the tanks can join in after. Forbidden Fruit 4 will summon four enemies. We want to find the cow dog. As the eggs come down, look for the one with a lot of eyes. This is the cow dog. The rest are minotaurs. Once again, role based mechanics. One group will be tethered to the cow dog. They all want to run to that platform and spread out, but without pointing the tether toward either of the other platforms. There's lots of room for this, but just ensure your tethers are pointed away. The cow dog will shoot lines of lightning at each player. These will hit the other platforms if pointed wrong. The other group is split up at random. Two players will have tethers to platform minotaurs. They want to go to the platform opposite of their Minotaur, as these are distance-based. Also, be on the side of the platform away from the Cow Dog. Not because of the Cow Dog, but because of the third mechanic. The Tethered Minotaurs will do a Conal Cleave toward their Tethered players, doing unavoidable damage. Standing to the side away from the Cow Dog prevents this from being an issue for anyone else. Our final pair has no Tethers at all. They are taking care of the Minotaur in the middle. This one will do two conal AoEs baited toward the two closest players. These are meant to be dodged, so we want to point these completely out of the way and dodge. The best place for this is directly opposite of the cow dog. Standing at the corner where the platforms connect will send the AoEs out into nothingness, but also barely touching the other two platforms because they are huge. After baiting, run to the cow dog platform. Standing at the edge of it will move you out of the way of the tethered Minotaur AoEs. As long as all players position correctly and the mid players move, everyone should come out of this with a little bit of damage taken. Well, a bit more if they're tanks, because they will be taking autos the entire time. Move mid for heals and Blades of Addis 2. Out of 2. The arena will be returned to normal with her doing a multicast of Hemetheos' Arrow 4 and Hemetheos' Holy 3 on the healers. Do not knockback mitigate this one. Have both groups get knocked directly north, then split up based on your light parties. Walk into the Blades of Addis start spots because you must get out of the north spot. The one coming from the south will kill you if you don't. Walk a little past the big sigils on the outside to be safe. Both tanks stay north while everyone runs towards the middle of the arena. We have another Arrow 2 Buster, and this is a safe way for everyone to get into position without the tanks being in the way. This is also the last tank buster, despite there being several minutes of fight left. Forbidden Fruit 5 is four birds and four towers within a semi-random pattern. Once again, roll based. Towers you just handle by going to your roll spread spots and adjusting slightly from there.
The bird players have the job of aiming their birds in a way they don't send them through the towers, into other bird players, or being knocked off by their own bird since it will do a knockback dash. Which bird you get is seemingly completely random, so watch your tether. To do it normally, run up to your bird and place yourself so that you will be knocked toward an empty spot at the opposite end of the arena. Use your tether as an aiming line if needed. To do it with arm's length or sure cast, walk to the empty spot you are going to aim for. This strap makes it harder to hit tower players, but might need more movement out of you. To help your bird friends as a tower player, do not stand in the middle of the tower. Stand toward the edge of the arena. This gives your bird players a wider margin for error, whether they are doing it the intended way or not. Quickly group back up, ideally toward one of the northern platform spots. There will be a spark of life into Immortal's Obble, so stacking up north allows you to prepare for both attacks at once. Choose one platform so you aren't all spread out. And now the tree is finally going to try and kill you. We have Invalid Purgation. It's Invalid Bonds, but much more. There are four sets of Wind and Holy. The order is random. For wins, it could be DPS, DPS, support, support. It could be support, DPS, DPS, support. Or any other potential combination where both teams do each mechanic twice. One platform will have a cow dog, and two will have birds. We want the birds to start. The seemingly intended strat is thus. Holy group will go to one platform and the win group to the other. Dodge the birds and do your debuffs. The animals will also go off. Then everyone group mid, heal up, and then comes the tricky part. The holy group for set 2 will go back to the holy platform, and will for all four sets. The wind players must alternate platforms. Bird, cow dog, bird, cow dog. This is because purgation now causes the debuffs to become mines after going off, exploding into gigantic AoEs when the next set of debuffs go off. The winds are just huge, while the holies are giant donuts. This is why holy all goes back to the same platform. Now for the easy solution. Just all go to the same platform. Have the holy group follow the middle of the bridge all the way up to the edge of the arena. Can use the middle plus to get there. For the wind players, make a sort of line heading north to south, with the fourth player being below the stack. The north-south line has a lot of room, so they don't even need to be at the middle of the platform, but even closer to the middle of the full arena. You all have to be running back and forth anyway, so might as well all just stick together for easier healing. Especially because after the second and fourth debuffs will be a Light of Life. This does some extreme damage. Mitigate heavily. Faint, addle, the good stuff. You need a quick heal after for the next set of debuffs too. This is by far the heaviest healing so far, so it may take a few runs for that alone. After the fourth debuffs go off, run to the opposite platform for the last time. Heal up and wait for the final set of mines going off. Head mid and prepare for... Oh, things got extremely easy again. Forbidden Fruit 6 is two birds along with Roots of Addis and a new AoE. Go to the platform without a fruit and run to the far corner. Hemetheos' glare is chasing AoEs on all players, but is no real threat if you run to the edge. Check the birds and see which one is pointed toward your platform. The arena will be put back into the triangle pattern as the glares go off. We want to head toward the bird that is not facing our platform. It will dash down the bridge as we try to cross, so toward the other bird means we ignore those. As soon as you make it across to the other platform, you are safe. Go a little extra to be sure, but it's not that far you need to run. And now things go off the walls. Famine's Harvest is first. There will be eight eggs. Look for the platform with only two, because that's the most important job. One group will be tethered to four minotaurs, and one group will have nothing. This nothing group will want to head toward the two minotaurs by themselves and bait all four conal AoEs they will send out. Now you 
all can stand in the middle point of the two at the edge, but just stand next to them, aiming them in the same direction. That direction being away from the middle. Closer is better, because you then need to dodge through for both those AoEs and the birds that are dashing down the pathways. The dodge is very quick, so sprint is also welcome even if you do the proper dodge. The tether group is going to go to the other two platforms and treating these the same as the previous tethers. Just pull them till they go purple. However, you want to also cross the tethers. You and the other person on your platform want to make an X with your tethers. Hide behind the minotaurs as well. This makes every conal AoE hit just you, clipping nobody else. Here's a picture to visualize the placement you want to have. Death's Harvest is a bit simpler. Still role-based, we have a bunch of cow dogs and two birds. The cow dogs on the bridges will tether to a roll group and do their lightning lines. One platform will be unavailable to use because a cow dog will do a normal AoE around it. The other two will have birds in the way, but that's okay. Each roll group will want to spread out on these platforms close to their cow dogs. There are a few ways to handle figuring out who needs to go where, such as go to the platform between the two bridge dogs. This one will always have a bird. Figure out which cow dog you are tethered to, and look across the bridge. If you see another cow dog, you stay on this platform. If you see a bird, cross the bridge, and that is your platform. I personally watch the eggs and see where the platform cow dog is. One of the bridges next to it will be empty. If the right bridge is empty, you go clockwise of your cow dog. If the left bridge is empty, you go counterclockwise. This is arguably much more complex, but that is how I do it. Use your roll spread spots like before, with the ranged players in the back squeezing in closer to each other for a shallower angle on their AoEs. This turns it into a mechanic you really only need to solve once. Or don't solve it at all and do the JP easy strat. It requires both tanks to invuln though, so don't commit to this strat if you say use it on the next mechanic which honestly needs it more. Simply have everyone choose a spot, and always go there, with the platform cow being always south. The tanks will both go to the bottom corner of the empty bridge, stack up, and just take both of their cow dog tethers out of the picture. No matter who gets what tether, this works. As long as everyone goes to their agreed positions, which is the only reason we had a death here. Finally, we have War's Harvest, which I've seen a lot of different strategies for to the point of being unsure which would be the intended strat. So I'm going to just skip all that and just go right to my group's chosen solution. Go to the opposite place as your tethered animal. If you have an animal on a platform, you will be on a bridge. If your animal is on a bridge, you should be on a platform. The players with birds need to be careful. They will absolutely need to use arm's length and sure cast to survive. You are otherwise extremely safe if everyone else goes to their intended spots. The roles I want to put a very bright light on is the Minotaur Tether next to the Cow Dog, and the Cow Dog group. The player with the Minotaur Tether will want to stand a step or two away from the side the Cow Dog group is on. They have very little leeway for positioning, and one of them will even be on your platform. Angling slightly away shouldn't kill anyone else so long as you aren't trying to point it at the bird player on the bridge. The cow dog player on that platform should very much hug the edge of the platform, spread just far enough away from the players on the bridge. If both tanks have their invulns, might as well both pop them. If you have the cow dog tethers, you could just stack up. This leaves more room for the healers. If you manage to survive this, you're home free. Everyone stack up south ASAP. There will be a spark of life to try and finish you off. She will cast Hemetheos' Holy Three and do a Bow of Addis. Just split left and right in your light parties like normal, and dodge any giant punches like normal. We will have two more Sparks of Life into a final Enrage, Light of Life. This very much feels like a puzzle fight at the back half, but completely barren until you get there. Again, the DPS check and heal check are the main issues. The mechanics you don't really need to do much for. You do each roll once, and you kinda have it on lockdown. 
The exception to me is War's Harvest, since strategies are either complex or just outright precise. Either way, enjoy your loot! P8S is going to murder you. Thank you for watching this guide on Abyssos, the Seventh Circle Savage. Like, comment, sub, the good stuff is appreciated. Follow my socials, link below, and maybe follow my Patreon for more content like this. Take care and may the power of an added hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks going out to... Ashtree Dweller, Eamon al -Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Sadia Diosasan, Serex, Ethan Olson, Ethan W, Frazier97, James Hall, JB Hruska, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Marlon Sebo, Mizella, Nick Griffin, T Rogue, Tim A, and Zero Two. Thanks again, that's three down, but by far the hardest two to go.